Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to our podcast, The More You Know. Our podcast will be looking into how the manufacture of semiconductors interacts with our everyday life. So welcome to the Edwards podcast, The More You Know. My name's Stuart and today we have got a very special guest uh, joining the podcast. Um, Kate, maybe you could introduce yourself. Hi, Stuart. Thank you for inviting me here. It's great to come and have a conversation. Um, So I'm Kate Wilson. I'm the president of the semiconductor division at Edwards. And obviously we supply a lot of equipment into the semiconductor industry. Um, So hopefully we can have a good conversation about about that and the environment. Uh, I've worked for Edwards for 27 years, so a lot of experience um, through, you know, all the semiconductor industry working in the UK uh, in California for 17 years and Korea for a couple of years. So I've had a, a lot of global experience with all of our customers. Um, and it's a fascinating industry, very exciting. Uh, but I am a bit concerned about some of the challenges we've got ahead. So that's a lot of countries you've worked in a different <laughs> place. Are you fluent in Korean? Uh, not quite. But, but, uh, but no enough to get by. That's <laughs> and good. And <laughs> So in the semiconductor industry, um, I've worked in it for a, a time and you've worked in it for a long time. It just seems to be that everyone, it's in the public conscious, everyone seems to be talking about semiconductors. You know, why do you think that is? Well, I think you know people haven't really realised um, the breadth of what semiconductors are involved with now. So traditionally, obviously, it was in your computer, um, you know, more recently in, in your telephone. But now semiconductors are in everything. So people can't buy anything that doesn't have semiconductors in. So I think, you know, with the... the um, you know, crises we've had globally with COVID and with production issues across all industries um, in semiconductor, that's been one of the drivers of that. And so it's just become much more mainstream to be aware of where semiconductors are used, how broadly we use them in our life every day. You know, every part of our life has semiconductors in now. And I think, you know, people seeing that will now, you know, understand that that's actually a critical part of how we interact with the world. It seems to be... um Everyone seems to understand what a microchip. It seems a lot easier now to explain what our jobs are. Now, <laughs> with that, that that challenges on that demand. What do you think that that impact that has on the environment? Yeah, and I think this is interesting because there's been quite a few high publicity semiconductor applications, like server farms, um, Bitcoin particularly, and and the mining there, where semiconductors obviously work on electricity. So, mm. You know, there's no other way you can run a chip. Um, And as we make more and more and use them in more applications, just that aspect of it means that there's an environmental impact. Also, because of the the, increased capacity that required to manufacture them with the increased usage, we clearly need to make more facilities that make them. They all take power to build, they all take power to operate, as well as water, as well as the, the gases that are used in that. And we have to be very conscious in the semiconductor industry of how we can ramp that capacity without impacting the environment too much. You talked there a little bit about the, the challenge of the semiconductor itself faces, is that we're, we're in that part of that supply chain. Could you maybe explore um, explain a little bit more on specific challenges the semiconductor industries, particularly around their product? We've talked about our scope one and two with, with our audience before, but that aspect of the the challenges the semiconductor industry has supplying to um, to their customers. Yeah, so I think that there's two real problems that we face in manufacturing semiconductors. So one is the manufacturing process mm-hmm. and, you know, where you put your fab, um, how efficient your chips are, you know, the design as well as the manufacturing process define you know, to a large mm. extent, what the environmental impact of, of that equipment is. Um, you know, where we supply into those facilities, clearly we can re- try, try and reduce the power, we can reduce the utilities that are required, um, we can try and make all the equipment more efficient so that we make more chips with less equipment. Um, and we can use things like renewable energy, we can recycle water, we can recycle the process mm. gases that you use. So there's a, a number of things that we can do um, within the manufacturing facility to look at reducing the environmental impact of that. And, and, you know, location is one thing because obviously the the power production of a country makes a difference in in how mm. green a fab can be. I think the, uh, the challenge the semiconductor has that is less in their control is what happens to their products after that. So they can't control really where the chips go. 
you know, where does the laptop go that the chip gets installed mm. in? Um, who's building what server farm where? All of those things, you know, you can track some of it reasonably well, but a lot of the product has quite a complex supply chain. Nobody knows where it ends up. And in that case, you know, the semiconductor industry is 100% reliant on the global footprint of electricity production and so that must vary from different countries though does so it? yeah so depending which country their chips end up in and which customer in which country because you know each customer will have a different footprint each region of the u.s has a different footprint um that will that'll affect their scope three and, and where their product goes and what the environmental impact of what they produce is and so Although we can control our manufacturing quite easily, where our products go to, we we kind of lose control as we go up the supply chain. And I think, you know, within that, th there's no option for semiconductor but to get the grid to be more environmental. Um, and you look at countries like China and Russia, you know, it's, it, it's much worse to use electricity than it is actually to use natural gas for any sort of, um, you know, if, fuel efficiency in terms of global warming potential uh, right now because of the, the the shape of their grids. And unless those countries have a commitment to reduce that, you know, we'll get to the point that we can't actually meet the goals that we need to, to keep global warming below two degrees without changing that and without, you know, potentially limiting the amount of uh, electricity using equipment we put into those countries. So did you think that's why so there's an accountability the semiconductor industry has to have and is trying to do. But this sounds like it's quite a challenge. They're not going to be able to do it on their own, are they? they, they uh, you know, we've got a certain aspect we supply still into the semiconductor industries. But so how, how could, how do you meet that challenge? Yeah, and I think it's interesting because, you know, it's an option to sign up to science-based targets. But if we want to keep global warming below two degrees... Everybody has to sign up. We can't say, oh, semiconductors special and we're important. We don't need to sign up. We have to. And right now that's a real challenge for the semiconductor industry because they can't see how they can control their downstream emissions, where they, they, they send the chips to. But I think when you look at the industry and the, the power and the influence the semiconductor industry has now, um, you know, governments are giving us billions of dollars to invest in their countries. Um, a condition of that investment has to be for those countries to improve their power production. Mm. Um, you know, and I think an example, I mean, clearly China has a lot of investment from the government now in China. Uh, and, you know, foreign investors do go into China uh, with their fabs. And so, you know, we need to be saying to that government, Chinese government, you know, we need renewable electricity. You have to make that commitment to make that change within your grid and not just for our company because that doesn't improve the use of the equipment it has to be that that roadmap for every country to get net zero on their electricity production because it's fundamental to anyone in semiconductor being able to sign up to science-based targets and if we don't then we can't achieve maintaining less than two degrees global warming so coming back to edwards on the aspect of what we're looking to do um this unprecedented demand is that you've got a building a lot of expansion at the moment. What sort of things are you overseeing that within our part of the supply chain that are having an impact in reducing our CO2 or a CO2 equivalent? Yeah, and we're quite fortunate in, you know, only a small portion of what we, our scope, so scope one and two is very small for us compared to scope mm. three. So it's our customers that really count. But even within our scope one and two, you know, we can make requirements and we've already moved over to renewable electricity in Korea, you know, and, and the objective of that not is not just to kind of tick a box for us. It's really to drive the Korean government and to show Korea that to get foreign investment and to get the, that investment from us, they have to be able to provide us provide us with the renewable energy because we can't afford to build fabs there if our factories mm. there if, if we can't get that and you know then downstream our customers will you know will have to do that and for their own manufacturing will drive that so i think you know on the power side of thing we're influencing governments you know by putting our money where our mouth is and, and and buying the renewables ourselves but also driving our customers in that direction as well and i think that's the first step i think it needs to be bigger than that and, and influencing more 
Um, and similarly, you know, we do put um, solar power in where we can. So we're not just, you know, sucking somebody else's renewables. We're creating uh, as much as possible in our facilities. And then really looking at all of the, you know, um, reuse of, of water. So recycling water, uh, limiting our just our waste production and making sure, you know, the packaging's optimized, that we have re reusable packaging where possible. So the other area we're looking at, so one of the big issues we have is, is transporting goods globally. So, you know, we tend to have a few large factories for efficiency and, and you know, making sure that we get the quality controls and everything in place that we need. Uh, but that means we have to ship things globally. And particularly now as semiconductors growing, that means there's an awful lot of air freight. So over the next few years, we will expand our global manufacturing footprint to make sure that we can actually manufacture and have the supply chains for all of our products much closer to the customers. And that will then reduce that, that scope of, of transit and transport both into our company for the supply chain, but also out to our customers. So I think that's the, the, you know, the second big area that we can mm. control you know, very directly ourselves. Um, so on top of that, we really have to go out to our customers and first of all, you know, give them products that require less power. So, yeah. you know, fundamentally, we're, all, we're always going to try and do that. Um, then obviously we will work with them to say, you know, you really need to use renewables and influence the governments in the countries that you operate to, to provide you with renewable energy as well, which obviously allows us to then, you know, say our, all of our products in use are using renewable energy. Uh, but then also look at different, um, you know, product capabilities that allow a reduction in their emissions of the gases that they use. So not just the electricity, but all the other materials that they use in the fab. Uh, and some of that's by just, you know, you look at the, the PFC, CF4 particularly, you know, we already sell abatement. So making sure we improve that abatement efficiency, you know, potentially capture the materials yeah, yeah. and reuse them rather so than like just, just capture, yeah. Um And then, yeah, but then going to saying, well, you know, if you've, they've created materials that were worse than what was put in, how do we get that back out? And, and carbon capture would be one of those. Um, but also just, you know, taking any materials they use and reusing them rather than having them go through mm -hmm. to a sort of waste treatment plants and and you know basically scrapped so i think you know the 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 first thing we would do obviously is try and use less of everything yep. but then if you have to use it to make sure that it's captured and recycled rather than just uh, you know abated and and put in the bin how, how much do you think the person using the the new smartphone how much do you think they're going to influence all this decision making process coming through how much do you think they'll influence that you know you're seeing it now power the energy prices are going up and there's a bit of pressure going on to say, oh, we pay it like in the UK, we pay a little bit extra on the renewables. Um, how do you think the consumer, the consumer at the moment, are, are, they're in a difficult position. They've got their new smartphone, but their power bills are going up. Yeah. Do you, what's your view on the aspect of the, the renewable extra we pay in our bill? And, and I think a lot of countries do that. Yeah, and it, it's interesting because I think, I mean, renewables are actually cheaper than fossil fuel production mm. of electricity now. So there's really no excuse to shift. But obviously there's a cost of shifting because we've already got the infrastructure for a lot of fossil fuel mm. power right now. Um, so I do think naturally it will happen just because it's cheaper. So mm -hmm. it's more about the capacity of how many solar panels, how many wind farms can we install quickly enough. Um, but on, in terms of the consumers, I think that, you know, where we've seen the biggest impacts is the companies that sell to consumers, they have to have a green image. Otherwise, mm. most consumers these days don't like them. And so they have to be showing how they're reducing their environmental impact up the whole supply chain. Um, and, uh, you know, where we've seen the most influence, I think, on our customers is where they're, you know, the customers that are between them and the end user are, are requiring um, them to have, you know, a more environmental approach to manufacture. And I think, you know, the car industry has actually been quite forward mm -hmm. in this, but you look at people like Apple as well. I'm not sure if we'd like to mention cars because of the delay and <laughs> the, the all coming through, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and it just, I mean, the, the number of chips in a car is phenomenal now. Mm. I mean, it's thousands of chips. It's not just a couple here and there. And I think you know, people don't underestimate how many, you know, discrete devices that they need to have. And, and it's, you know, it's a big use of actual energy in the car. Uh, interestingly, for mobile phones, I think the biggest driver for efficiency within the phone and, and reduction of power usage of chips is battery life. So, you know, yeah. that inherently had a fundamental customer requirement that 
made the, the you know the manufacture of the chips reduce the power mm. usage of the chips but you know that we have to look at i mean there's a, a, an enormous amount of innovation within the semiconductor yeah. industry you know constant constant innovation and power has always been one of the drivers but you know i think fundamentally now that that's going to become you know of an order of magnitude more important to get that power done because it used to be mm. about you know the, the battery life of a phone or the size of the the uh, the thing you've got to get the chip smaller which tend to take less power as well uh, but now it's really you know it's it's fundamental to the environmental impact to the semiconductor industry and you know it's quite interesting if you look at the trend the the installed base of power production globally only cre- increases by a few percent a year and the use of of semiconductors is is increasing sem- you know exponentially because yeah. of the amount yeah. of semiconductors that have been produced and if you you know if everything keeps on at the same rate of increase as it is now um semiconductors would use all the power in the world by about 20 I was going to ask five. you that yeah <laughs> i remember i remember seeing a graph from you showing that 2% increase but what was that you gave a quote or some country you gave a quote that if it kept going it was it data centers or something you're seeing the use of data centers and the, the the power the energy they were requiring and and actually in some countries might actually have to make a hard choice was it around i can't remember yeah, what was no, that about i think me? in ireland um uh, i can't remember what the date is now but yeah the, if uh, if they kept on with the data centers they basically they'd run out of power pretty quickly yeah. <laughs> so, so it's so there, there seems to be a a, a um, the balance is is going to tip over at some point, isn't it? We're going to have to look at supplying more energy. We can't do it with fossil fuels because it's going to be CO2 or, you know, uh, transmission. So the renewable seems to be the way going forward. I'm just thinking then, so if you can, if we could look at influencing governments you're talking about, how what's your vision on how it would work? If they, they come, you know, you've got the consumer, you've got um, industries and, and you've got the governments. How do you see it all coming together to actually change our way of thinking? Yeah, and I think, I mean, like I said, I think semiconductor really is in a u- unique position because everybody's fighting to get both the supply security, so they mm. want manufacturing locally to get that that security of supply because there's such a supply challenge right now. Um, but also, you know, it's a high technology industry with really high quality jobs, mm. uh, and you know, for any. Country, that's a that's a good industry to have uh, and develop. So, looking at that, you know, you, you look at Intel investing in Europe, and mm. you know, all the European countries were fighting over yeah, who can yeah. get Intel to put their fab there. You know, and that's been the same across all the states in in the US. While we've looked at TSMC and Samsung and uh, and Intel making their choices of new locations there. You know, all of the states are giving all sorts of incentives. So clearly the semiconductor industry can put, you know, fairly significant demands on their investment. And I think we should look at, at you know, when when the when we're investing and, you know, myself as well. And like I say, one of the decisions I had in building a new factory in Korea, we're just about to double our capacity in Korea. If we hadn't have been able to get renewable energy in Korea, I would have had to think again because I can't increase my environmental footprint by putting mm. a new factory there if I couldn't have got renewable energy. So I think, you know, we, we do need to make that a condition of investment and say we need mm. you to have a plan in your country. So it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but, you know, you need to accelerate your plans to to provide renewable electricity. So all through that supply chain, the CEOs are probably like you're all having that challenge in their head. Yeah. So if, if we were looking at the, 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 some of the other podcasts, we talk about the kind of greenwashing aspect of it, and we agreed is that the best way forward was around signing up to, for example, the science-based target initiatives. What would be your kind of call to action to the other CEOs, the other presidents within the semiconductor industry around science-based target initiatives? Yeah, and I think, I mean, it is very challenging because semiconductor is growing so quickly for any company that's growing as quickly as semiconductor. You know, we're trying to get absolute levels below previous absolute levels, not a percentage of how big our company is. And so for semiconductor, you know, I can imagine everybody looks at that and says, that's hard. And they don't actually control Mm. the electricity supply globally. Oh, so that's hard. But like I say, we have to sign up. So I think the semiconductor industry as a whole needs to sit down together and say, you know, what are those big barriers to us signing up? Mm. And how do we all operate together, uh, you know, as a unit to influence 
the governments to put the the plans in place that allow us. So they have to say, what does it take to get us there? Because we have to get there. And then we make a plan about what we, you know, what we all need to collectively do to get there. And I think the number one is to get the grid decarbonized because semiconductors use power. There's nothing else that we could do to to solve their scope three. Um, But then obviously there's a number of things below that in terms of materials that we use, in terms of how we manage the, the, you know, the water usage of facilities and really sharing those best practices, making sure we collaborate as an industry to, you know, get our Pareto problems and solve each problem Mm -hmm. as we go down. But by far the number one problem in semiconductor is the grid you know that yeah. that absolutely will be the the biggest issue that anybody has in being able to meet their science-based targets would it be a fair summary then to say that the consumer is going to play its part our industry or the, the supply chain of our industry which we play a big part in all the way through and the governments are the, the key as three working together would, would you say that's what that is no absolutely and i think you know the the people you know the broader population influences everybody and you know businesses want to make money if people don't mm. let them they, they're going to change what they do um i do think that um you know all industry bodies have an influence and semiconductor is a particularly large one right now it has yeah. a, an outsized influence globally uh to influence the governments and but fundamentally it has to be the governments that do make the change because they do control their power supplies and so that you know they have to do they have to do it so Kate, if there was kind of key bullet points from our discussion today and to say to our audience what would these kind of key areas think are important takeaways yeah and i think that the main thing that we need to pay attention to is your know, semiconductor is a, a huge industry it's growing it's critical to the, the development of society and how we live today um, but we need to make sure that we enable society growth with an environmental angle as well. And, and you know, working together as an industry, we need to meet the science-based targets. You know, that mm. is critical to keep global warming below a level that's seen as dangerous. And we've seen some of the consequences of that not happening. So, you know, it's not the future. It is now that we're mm. seeing these issues. So we do really need to collaborate across the industry to make sure that we, you know, clean up our own manufacturing, make sure we're as environmental as possible in how we make the, the products, but also enable our customers to, you know, reduce the environmental impact as we use them. And to do that, we have to decarbonise the grid. I think that's a great place to stop. So, Kate, um, this has been really great. This has been really informative and then hopefully for our audience too. Thank you for your insights into our industry and your thoughts on the environment. Well, thank you for having me. And as you can tell, it's something that I've uh, got a lot to say about and I'm very passionate Passion. about. Passion. <laughs> and hopefully we'll have you again on our podcast soon. Maybe. <laughs>